Hello YouTubers, uh, this is Arya Train Man 2 and uh, this is a special video for uh, actually a couple of uh, modelers who asked about my color foam. Uh, one person wanted to know um, how easy or how hard it was to lay track in between the color foam or foamies. Here is uh, one of the sheets. You can pause your video so you can see this, the size and dimensions. Uh, 9 by 12, 22.86 centimeters by uh, 30.48 and it's 2 millimeters thick. Uh, which actually makes it perfect height for uh, uh, a lot of things. Okay, so I have uh, two full sheets and a scrap piece. Uh, the color foam or foamies, they, uh, they cut real easy with a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife. Uh, I have a piece of track here. Uh, just so you know now, um, another person asked me about uh, laying this color foam and basically putting uh, roadway or uh, railroad way into sunken concrete or asphalt, uh, such as uh, a paved parking lot with rails running through it. But he has Cato Unitrack. Uh, I used to have some uh, lifelike power lock track, but I don't anymore. So uh, I have this board here. This is a, uh, uh, I think it's half inch thick and uh, maybe a quarter inch thick. It looks a little shorter than a quarter. You know how wood is nowadays, it's not like it was in the 50s. Simply put the track on top of it, and boom, I have elevated track. This would be like the Bachman Easy track, or the Lifelike Power Lock, or the Cato Unit track. Uh, it's basically just elevated track from the from the uh, surface of the layout. Well, I'll start with the uh, regular track, since most people, uh, most modelers that have asked me, that is. Um, are using Atlas Flex Track. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the uh, scrap piece up the middle. And uh, Atlas Flex Track is good. Uh, all the Flex Track is good. Um, when it's down on the flat base without using a cork road bed, the. Uh, uh, readjust the camera so you can see. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the uh, the uh, foam is exactly level with the ties. So that's why I use these two uh, scrap pieces. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, put my camera back up on the tripod, is... Uh, Simply move the second piece of color foam right up on it, and bam! <laughs> That's how easy it is. This stuff actually uh, glues to each, each other very well. It glues to wood, it glues to plastic, it glues to everything. Uh, so you can just either use Elmer's wood glue or Elmer's glue, even regular Elmer's glue works. or. Uh, Cheap super glue. Everything works. So now it is track level. This makes for perfect uh, laid track. Now what I have is Woodland Scenics Subterrain Smooth It. Mix the Smooth It into a, a jug with water. I have water. I have the jug. And you take a putty knife, mix it up, and put it from one side to the other, and simply rub. 
you can go down the rails, the inside of the rails with the putty knife to get out the lines, or you can run a train car on it. Now I'm actually going to show this in process, but I'm going to show it, show it with the elevated track. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you the entire process with elevated track. We'll see how fast I can do it. Okay. Here's my elevated track. We'll just call it we'll call it uh, Bachman Easy Track, okay? Even though technically it's what? Oh, this is Atlas uh, Flex Track. This works with all codes. It doesn't matter what code you use, as long as you leave a uh, a short gap. Um, let's see, about the width of a. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know. About the width of a um, HO scale diesel tire, which would be about uh, four to five millimeters uh, on the outside of the rail, uh, you won't have train cars jumping off the track. Okay, so here's my elevated Bachman Easy Track. You can't exactly put a grade crossing on there without having this big dip. A lot of modelers say, oh, I, I, how do I get rid of that dip? How do you do that with an elevated track? Um, well, that's pretty easy. You measure the uh, roadbed of the plastic elevated tracks, such as the Cato or the Bachman or the Lifelike. I'm sure there's other brands out there. Then you find a couple of things that are the same height. And then you just work as if it's uh, the regular height. So here we go. I'm probably going to run out of super glue in this. Yes, I did. So I need to go get some more real quick. So even even after running out of the uh, super glue, I'm still going to have this done relatively fast because it's uh, it's pretty basic. Um, a lot of modelers have uh, made their entire parking lots out of uh, the smooth it or wall and joint compound or putty. You guys will know that it's a messy process the cleanup is a hassle you get plaster all over the place uh, I've done it myself I've I, I used uh, smooth it and wall and joint compound for years I wouldn't use anything else okay now I'm not gonna glue these next two sections down because they are uh, good sections of color foam and I want to save them but uh, yeah I'll put something heavy on them as if they are glued down there's one side there's the other side now my track is level with the asphalt here. Now this asphalt, I know it's shiny black. That's what we invented paints for. So we could uh, change them. Now I got my jug. I got some water. I'll show you how I mix. You just mix until you get a certain consistency that you want. Uh, thicker the better. There really is no uh, science to the mixing of this stuff it, it, uh, it'll tell you on the box uh, a ratio 
but I find that ratio to be a little uh, thin. And uh, don't worry about putting putty or fill it or smooth it over your track. It's not going to hurt your track. When this stuff dries, it's like powder. And the smooth it is basically a wall and joint compound. <coughs> Excuse me. The only reason why I have it is because uh, I've had it for a very long time. I don't use very much of it uh, because I only use it for filling in the middle of the rails. You can see the consistency that I have. It's like a toothpaste almost. I'm going to have to hold this down because none of it is secure. You want to fill up all the cracks and holes. You can run it in any direction to fill up a hole. Go back and forth to fill up all the gaps. Take whatever putty off of there that you're not going to use or that you know is too much. And simply scrape from the rail head to the outside of the color foam. Then you can go to the outside of the nasty edge, take off all the excess. It's hard for me because uh, I have those sockets in the way, but uh, nevertheless, this is just about done. A concrete asphalt, it's never perfect, so don't worry if you have little sections where it looks like there's holes in there or uh, wavy spots. That'll add to the realism later on when you're done. Okay, now what I like to do is um, take a old junky train car that you're not going to be using and uh, run it over the rail just to put the uh, imprints in. A lot of people say wait until it's dry to do this. You don't have to. I got a little bit of goop on the wheels. No big deal. And there you go. Uh, we'll start the video back up when this is dry. And uh, I'll show you how to clean it up and get it done. So I just laid track around the color foam. And, uh, oh, I don't know about uh, nine or ten minutes so we'll come back when it's dry and I'll clean it up all right you guys so uh, by the uh, magic of the camera you had a second in the break while well, I had hours for uh, this to try and dry but uh, I'll tell you it doesn't really take that long to dry uh, the color foam actually absorbs some of the uh, the uh, wetness. Now if this was uh, glued down, if this top layer of color foam was glued down, uh, it would actually wouldn't be that tough for me to do this. Uh, this will probably crack in here because this is moving. It's not uh, glued down. But you can see that a little bit of scraping with the putty knife uh, along the edge it cleans up rather nice. Uh, you can put a nice straight line down the side if you want or you can even leave it uh, like it's uh, backfill. Uh, but nonetheless you get the picture 
Now, if you wanted to, um, you know, say, be, say, make a uh, like a large parking lot, uh, you would take the boards like I found here on the edge to uh, be up to the height of the roadbed from like the easy uh, track from Bachman or the power lock track from Lifelike or the uh, Cato Unitrack. Uh, just build it up to the same height build it up all the way across you can have uh, you can use wood you can use cork uh, you can stack the color foam if you want I, I wouldn't recommend that uh, or you can use uh, insulation board such as the uh, pink foam board which would probably be the best to use uh, now you see there's a uh, uh, it's like a uh, track laid into the into the uh, concrete. Now what you can do is roll a car along there to clean out the wheel flanges, or you could just simply take your exacto knife which it's over here and just run it along the inside of the wheel flange where the wheels would go on the inside of the track it's really easy to do that alright if it chips out a little bit you should probably do it before it dries a hundred percent it's still a little uh, tacky and comes out pretty easy but uh, either way it's it's still pretty easy to do uh, this is uh, slightly easier than than uh, making the entire parking lot out of uh, the uh, smooth it or some kind of wall and joint compound or putty uh, because the entire parking lot will uh, take a while to dry it'll uh, it makes a mess I still use it sometimes for some projects but uh, the color foam is so much easier to use. It's uh, less of a mess. Like, look at this. This is just from uh, one little section. Imagine if I did a, an entire an entire parking lot of this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're looking at a, a quite a cleanup. Even if you do use a shop vac, and you're getting dust all over the place and getting all this junk all over the place. The color foam is just much easier. I'll go ahead and take the some of the sockets off. Now, if this were uh, if this was concrete, I would mix my uh, my concrete colors. So I'd use my custom concrete mix that I have. Uh, since it's uh, going to be black asphalt, I'll just paint it real quick and show you how it looks. I'm using uh, Apple Barrel Black. The uh, color foam uh, takes really well uh, to the paint, so there's no really no worries about the paint. Uh, it sucks it in pretty good. Now this is just a quick demonstration. Of course, if I was doing this for a real layout, I'd 
be taking my time and, and doing a lot better than this, but this is just to give you an idea of how quick the transition would be. And then uh, also the colors. Uh, roads are not this shiny black, they're not this jet black, unless they're, uh, you know, just getting paved. You and I both know that that doesn't happen very often. So after you uh, brush dab up and down, uh, this creates a, uh, a kind of a textured uh, appearance, like a, a porous asphalt. I'm using one of these uh, these little disposable. Um, like a sponge brush. Okay, after that's done, you can take whatever you like. I have an old dish towel that I'm using. Uh, what I do is I wrap it around my finger and use the tip of my finger to rub off the rail head. On both rails. And voila! You can see that I have run rail through asphalt. I'll give you a down low look at it. So you can see that it's pretty much straight across. So vehicles can still drive across it. But also uh, train cars can roll on it. I get my test box car and set it on there. You'd want to wait till it dries before you go and do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can see that it's pretty much that easy. The color foam, uh, you can do all sorts of things with it. Uh, as you can see on this, this is gray color foam. You can see by using an X-Acto knife you can cut cracks and lines into it. You can do the same thing with the black for asphalt. Asphalt has cracks in it. Now the gray color foam does come a little too gray. Um, you know, it's like gray gray. It's not a brown gray like this Walther's plastic here. But uh, by custom mixing your paints, or if, you, if you're not a custom paint mixer and you just want something right out of the bottle, you want it quick, uh, I recommend uh, Woodland Scenic's um, Scenic Paint uh, Concrete Color. Um, it's a really good color. Uh, it, asks, it also works really good on the, um, the color foam gray. Uh, and you can also use it on the color foam black to lighten up the black color because uh, most asphalt roads are uh, like a dark dark grayish color or a dark grayish brown color they're not, they're actually not a uh, a a black color like this unless they had just laid down asphalt uh, so what I'm, what I like to do is uh, weather it until it does get to be like a light, light gray color. But as you can see, the faster it dries, the better it looks. Hmm. 
and you can see it's pretty much straight across. So these uh, these color foam sheets, you can uh, set them up corner to corner. Uh, you can hide the seams if you want with uh, smooth it or wall and joint compound. Uh, if you don't want to hide the seams, like on concrete, you don't have to hide the seams because concrete they lay in sections. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. It's that easy. And uh, this started out as. Uh, what we call it? Bachman Easy Track Elevated Track here in the middle. And we just added two boards on either side to build it up to the right height. And um, there you go. That's how you lay track inside of concrete or asphalt via flat track or easy track. Uh, let me know what you think, if this was helpful to you. Um, if it was, uh, that's good. If not, I can reiterate and do a new video. And I'll actually be doing videos on the laying of concrete on every part of my layout. Um, not because um, not because I I want to show you over and over again, but because I was asked by several people, actually a few dozen people, uh, to show start from finish uh, how I built um, this layout. Um, so that's what's going to happen. Most of this is going to have color foam on it and uh, almost all of this area will have color foam on it and uh, all the roads will be color foam, most of the roads anyway. Uh, so anyway, let me know what you think and uh, and I will definitely get back to you. So thanks guys and take care.